Oh man, people are really still out here installing these silly malicious browser extensions. And you know, the Chrome Web Store, they're still out here giving these malicious extensions a featured status. Come on now and get your yummy malware here, courtesy of the Chrome Web Store. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like all browser extensions are malicious. There's plenty of great ones that I use like MetaMask, Return YouTube Dislike, uBlock Origin. They're great extensions. There's lots of great extensions out there, but most of them, especially the ones that turn out to be malicious are just pointless bloatware at best, or in the case of these five extensions, they will also track your browsing activity and do URL injection on your browser. And by the way, most of these browser extensions are still in the Chrome Web Store right now. The original Netflix party that had 800,000 downloads, that one is gone. But Netflix Party Plus or Netflix Party 2, whatever you want to call it, that is still chugging along fine with over 300,000 users. And you know, that's a lot of people who have downloaded and presumably actually use this app. So I had to get to the bottom of what the hell this thing claims to do and why so many people would want to use it. So basically what this one does, on the surface at least, is creates a chat room and it lets you sync together on a Netflix video with other people so that you can all basically watch a movie or a series together in your own homes. Okay, so I kind of understand why something like this would have become popular during the pandemic times, right? Because you can't go out to your friend's house and watch the movie together or go to a movie theater and watch it. So maybe this is the next best thing, right? Everybody was watching Netflix a couple years ago, so why not use this to sync them together? Except there's so many better ways to do that than to install some shady browser extension that just does this really niche thing that doesn't even work on most websites. Like this one here, it says that it works on Twitch and Prime Video and things like that. But all of this still only assists you with consuming content, which hopefully is not what you're spending most of your time on the internet doing. But anyway, if you were to use or if you wanted to watch Netflix with your friends in a non-spooky way, you could just share your screen on Discord or Skype or whatever unified communications app you're using. And I know, I know, a lot of you are probably rolling your eyes when I say to use Discord because it's not open source and it's not privacy friendly at all. But I also doubt that you, the one rolling your eye at Discord, are the kind of person that is using Netflix either. You know, you're probably, as far as consuming content goes, torrenting your stuff, so just give your friends access to your seed box. But something tells me that a lot of the people that are using these kinds of extensions already have Discord installed. It's already on their computer. They already have the functionality to share videos with their friends and have a chat room and talk about the movie and whatever. So just use Discord's screen share feature and boom, you've got the same thing without the spyware. Well, besides the spyware that's within Discord, but you already had that installed, okay? You already had that spyware, so there's no reason to now introduce a new spyware that's going to fight with Discord for dominance of your system. And using that screen sharing method with Discord or any other type of video streaming thing you wanna do, also does not require your guests, the other people that are watching with you, to have a Netflix account. Because this video sync extension here, Netflix Party, this only works if you're signed into Netflix. Whereas that screen sharing method that I talked about doesn't necessarily have to be Discord, it could be any private stream thing that you want to do, uh, that's just recreating the video stream. So your friends, your guests, they get to be based internet pirates when they watch the movie with you. It doesn't require a Netflix account. Now let's take a look at the malicious components of these extensions. And this technical analysis is provided by McAfee Labs. Link in the description if you want to learn more. 
So the source code that we're gonna be looking at, it belongs to this first extension here, Netflix Party, which like I said, this one was removed from the Chrome Web Store. But according to McAfee Labs, all five of these extensions, Netflix Party, Netflix Party 2, uh, Flip Shop Price Tracker, which seems to be some kind of really niche price tracking app for these different stores here, those different sites there. Uh, and the full page <laughs> screenshot capture, which, oh my gosh, I, like I can't even believe that people are using an extension like this. Uh, apparently, all of these and the uh, auto buy flash sales, all of these extensions have similar behavior. Uh, but again, we just have source code for the one. So the manifest.json sets the background page to bg.html, which loads up b0.js, which is responsible for sending the URL that you want to visit to your browser and then injecting an affiliate code into it if the developer of this extension happens to have an affiliate code for the site that you're visiting. So it does URL injection. And here we can see some of the variables that are set within that JavaScript file. So ref is the base64 encoded referral URL. So that's the one that has their referral code in it. Uh, it's also grabbing the country of your device. So this is the device that's running the extension, the city, the zip code, and it's creating API send. So that's a random ID that's generated for the user to uniquely identify you. So this is some pretty spooky data that is just unnecessarily being collected from everyone that's using this extension. I mean, this is basically the developer of the extension tracking you by your physical location, as well as this random ID that's presumably gonna be unique for everybody that's using it. Uh, and it's also grabbing the name of Chrome extensions that you're using, which if you're the kind of person that's going out of your way to install these very, very random extensions that only have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people using them, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you're probably the kind of person that installs a whole bunch of extensions and a whole bunch of really niche extensions. Uh, and if you're doing that, then that's another way that your browser can be tracked, okay? Anyone can just check what extensions you have installed in your browser when you visit a site. And if you have a unique combination, then hey, we now know that that is uniquely you. So that's another reason to just avoid installing a whole bunch of extensions in your browser in the first place. It really makes your user agent stick out like a sore thumb. So when you go to a URL, bestbuy.com is the example that they use in this write-up, it checks that URL against langhort.com to see if it matches a website, that the developer has an affiliate ID for. And then if it does, it's gonna to respond to the query. And basically it's going to inject that into your browser. So you can basically see the behavioral flow uh, here, or actually I think they have a video of it. Yeah, let's just play the video of it. So this will show you step-by-step step what's actually happening in the browser. So they go to bestbuy.com. And over here, he's recording his network activity so he can actually see everything that's being requested. So you have this track data, and then that's doing the request to Langhort, and then that's the um, referral link that's base64 encoded. And then it's actually injecting this into the browser as an iframe. So you see bestbuy.com up here, but then you see within this iframe, it's using the affiliate link. So it's being done in a really sneaky way. Like you're not even necessarily going to realize this because most people aren't gonna inspect Element and take a look at the iframes and see what URL, the full URL that those are going to. They're just gonna look up here, which of course says bestbuy.com, but still because it's using the iframe and it's injecting that into your cart and everything like that, uh, if you actually try to like when you actually check out on the page, they're still going to get commission. It's still going to count as an affiliate purchase, a commission purchase for the developer. 
So they're making you do this in a really sneaky way. Like I don't have anything against affiliate links personally. I don't use them, but I think that it's a great way to partner with other business, like especially if you're a content creator, but they have to be used responsibly. I, I really think that the people using your affiliate link should be doing it consciously. Like they should realize, okay, I'm using this person's affiliate link and not trick them into using it. And they should understand what affiliate links are. So this is a really dishonest way to try to make some extra money. And this is actually malicious because I know in this case, the dev is injecting an affiliate link. So maybe some of you guys don't think it's that big of a deal, but the dev could make those links go to whatever he wants. He could just as easily make the redirect go to a fake Best Buy site that steals your credit card information when you enter it onto the cart page. Uh, and then they also talk about this time delay. So when you install uh, these extensions, and this is also the reason why I didn't just show it to you in real time, they wait 15 days after you've installed the extension. So this is their way of getting around any checking, any vetting that might be happening in the Chrome Web Store, if any is actually taking place at all. So yeah, be careful what extensions you are installing. And really, a lot of this can be avoided by just avoiding system sprawl and not installing multiple apps or multiple software solutions that do the same thing. Like this Netflix party thing. Like I said, better ways to do that. You can use Discord, you can stream in all sorts of other ways and it doesn't require all the guests that are watching that stream to have a Netflix account. The full page screenshots. So this is another malicious extension that does URL injection and it is featured. Holy crap, guys, the absolute state of the Chrome Web Store. 200,000 people have installed this featured malicious extension, rest in pepperoni. But again, what would even compel you to install this in the first place? What kind of jank ass operating system does not have a built in screenshot utility that is accessible via the print screen button? I mean, seriously, why the hell would you install something to take screenshots of just your browser when your operating system comes with a built in screenshot utility? My God, we should have never let the normies use the Internet. We should have never advanced past ARPANET. We should have just kept the normies watching TV and shopping in malls. They were never ready for the internet. They were never ready for browser extensions.